Hi everyone and welcome back to the lab. In this video I'll be making phenyl, which is this compound here, from salicylic acid. This is done through a process called thermal decarboxylation, whereupon carbon dioxide is removed from a carboxyl group, as you can see here, um, thermally, so with heat, to, to uh, essentially remove it from an aromatic ring. So you can see how the group is here and it's no longer attached over there. So uh, basically it's done by just heating the crap out of salicylic acid and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, unfortunately, this reaction has a, a few side reactions. You'll notice that uh, this is an acid, right? It's a carboxylic acid. This is the acid group here, and this has a hydroxyl group on it. And uh, we all know that hydroxyls react with acids, or you may or may not know, uh, to form esters. And so, uh, the main uh, side reaction here is going to be phenyl salicylate, uh, the ester of. Uh, the phenyl ester of salicylic acid. Uh, also possible side reactions include uh, the reaction of salicylic acid with itself to form uh, salicylyl salicylate or diphenyl ether from the acid removal of water since this is going to take place at high temperature. There are lots of other possible side reactions, but uh, long story short, you can make this in about 75% yield if you do it on a large scale. Um, you can make phenyl on a 75% yield that is from salicylic acid. Industrially, uh, phenyl is made in huge quantities, and in fact, salicylic acid is made from phenyl. And uh, the reason that we're doing this sort of in reverse to get phenyl is because phenyl is not really found in a whole lot of consumer products. It sort of burns your skin and stuff like that. Uh, it's found in, uh, in chlorosepic throat spray in very small uh, concentrations, and you can isolate it from that, but it's kind of a pain. So this way is much better because salicylic acid is much more available since it's used in a lot of uh, over-the-counter acne medications and uh, skin care products and things like that. And you can actually order the pure stuff online as opposed to the fennel. So anyway, I'm going to start with uh, some stuff I happen to order online, some salicylic acid, and we'll just heat it up and we'll get some fennel and then uh, this will distill off, we'll purify it, and uh, yeah, it'll make for an interesting video. And I'll be using the fennel in an upcoming video for a number of things. So I've set up the apparatus required for this reaction, and you can see that uh, there are a few standard components you might recognize. The, uh, the lab jack here, the one liter heating mantle. In it I've got a 500 milliliter round bottom flask that will place the salicylic acid in to be decarboxylated thermally. Now this reaction takes place at a pretty high temperature, in the order of like 180 C, and uh, phenyl, which uh, is going to be leaving this reaction, is a solid at room temperature. So I'm using this special type of uh, apparatus here. This piece here is called a short path condenser short path distillation head slash condenser, whichever you want to call it. Um, and essentially it combines the distillation head, the condenser, and the vacuum takeoff adapter all in one. And what this allows to happen is a much shorter path for the distilled gases to, to pass through. And uh, that allows them uh, to not cool off as much as they normally would through a whole system. And because the fennel that we're distilling from here is solid at room temperature, like I mentioned earlier, we don't want it to solidify in the condenser and uh, plug up the apparatus. So I'm actually going to have to fill this with warm water, and then uh, that'll keep the fennel liquid enough so that stills over and uh, we don't have any clogging problems. Also, I've made a thermometer for this still head here. Uh, I might detail a video about this in the future, but you can see it's just a piece of glass tubing that has a, uh, a thermocouple down inside it. It's, I flamed the, uh, the end shut there, and uh, that allows me to measure temperatures up to pretty much the melting point of the glass with that Type K thermocouple. And uh, that's nice because I don't have a mercury or an alcohol thermometer that can actually measure the temperatures uh, required for this reaction. So. Anyway, that'll work out just fine at the expense of uh, some accuracy, and of course I'll be reading that with my uh, standard uh, thermocouple reader here. So, anyway, let's get the salicylic acid weighed out. We'll charge it into the apparatus and get this reaction going. This is the salicylic acid. It comes as a fine uh, sort of caked white powder when you buy it uh, industrially. This is the actual USP grade, in fact. It's medically pure, so that should be good for this experiment, making sure that we've got uh, essentially pure salicylic acid. And I'm going to go ahead and add this to the 500 mil round bottom flask. All right, and that's 200 grams of salicylic acid added to the flask. I'm also going to add a few boiling chips and then replace the still head. Alright, so I've added warm water to the condenser and I just did that by simply taking this hose, you can see up here, and holding it under the warm water in the sink, kind of keeping my hand on it to blow the water through the condenser, flush it a little while to get it up to temperature. You can see the the output line right there, the discharge line, is just uh, in the sink. And then uh, once it was sufficiently warm, I just sort of held it up and clamped it. And that keeps the water nice and stationary in the condenser. Now, as you can see, I've also uh, hooked up a receiving flask here. This is a 250 milliliter round bottom, and that'll collect the fennel that's produced. So now all that's left to do is to uh, turn on the thermocouple reader. There we go, 15.4 C in here. Uh, it's actually warming up now because they've got the warm water in there. And uh, turn on the heat. 
and we'll begin to distill some fennel. As the heating continues, the salicylic acid will melt into a puddle in the bottom of the flask, and then uh, at a little bit of a higher temperature, it'll start to bubble as the decarboxylation happens and carbon dioxide is given off. Now, the carbon dioxide serves to push the fennel through the apparatus, so the generated CO2 will essentially blow the fennel vapors uh, through the apparatus and help us out. Unfortunately, salicylic acid does sublime at these temperatures, and the carbon dioxide will push some salicylic acid through as well. So, uh, to reduce the uh, occurrence of that, since there is a temperature difference between the boiling point of salicylic acid and the boiling point of fennel, it's uh, ideal to keep the still head temperature, as measured by the thermocouple up in there, to approximately less than 165 uh, degrees Celsius during this uh, entire process. So you can see now we're getting a puddle of liquid. Uh, this should start happening pretty quick. But anyway, yeah, so 165 Celsius at the top is uh, a pretty good balance between uh, collection of fennel at a reasonable rate and uh, reducing the amount of salicylic acid that is distilled over to a minimum. You can see in there the fluffy crystals that the salicylic acid has made as it's sublimed on the roof of the flask, which sort of highlights the issue. All right, you can see now the salicylic acid is a refluxing liquid, and uh, some of those bubbles are CO2, which is from the decarboxylation. And you can see that fennel has started to solidify up here in the condenser. Still had temperature is 145 degrees C, so uh, tell us either salicylic acid or fennel, but uh, it's probably fennel. Um, yeah, the condenser appears to be clogging slightly. I may need to hit that with a heat gun just to make sure, but so far we are collecting at a slow dribbling rate here, so uh, it's not totally clogged just yet. I may need to uh, I guess I'd hit, that with, hit that with a heat gun just to make sure. And uh, oops, I need to turn the heating down and lower the jack a little because we have exceeded our still head temperature temporarily and we're going to clog this with salicylic acid if we're not careful. So uh, let's uh, let this cool down. I'll hit that with a heat gun to clear it out and uh, we can resume this shortly. Alright, the reaction is chugging along pretty happily. I seem to have found a good setting on the heating mantle, which is like uh, three quarter power, as you can see by the temperature control over there. Um, you can see the carbon dioxide coming off of the decarboxylation, no problem. We've got fennel condensing in the still head and uh, running down the condenser, which is not clogged. Uh, the water in here is consistently nice and warm, and it's allowing for the condensation of the fennel, but not the freezing of it. Actually, I think some is frozen here, but that could also be salicylic acid. It just hasn't managed to clear since the initial uh, problem that we had with the overheating. And you can see there's a fairly steady uh, rate of collection of fennel happening in this flask. And that's the crude fennel, of course, mixed with some salicylic acid and some other things, which we'll be purifying later. So, all there is to do now is to leave this for uh, probably an hour or so and uh, let the decarboxylation finish up. All right, the distillation has been going for about two hours, and you can see that uh, there's not much left in this flask. Uh, a very high boiling liquid started to climb the flask and reach the still head. Uh, while I was away for about five minutes and the still head temperature rapidly climbed to uh, about 190 Celsius. So I, I turned it off really fast and lowered the flask. I think that's about all there is to be had out of this anyway. Uh, as you can see, I've collected quite a bit of uh, fennel mixed with salicylic acid, mixed with some impurities. It's taken on somewhat of a yellow color and it appears that the distillate, the high boiling distillate, is a bit yellow in color. Not really sure why that is. But anyway, um, we'll go ahead and distill this uh, crude fennel here from the rest of the stuff after all this cools down. This is the fennel from the first run, and you can see that it's still liquid despite it being room temperature and thus well below its melting point. And uh, that occurred because uh, fennel tends to super cool, especially in the presence of a tiny amount of water, which is probably in here since the, uh, the reaction between the salicylic acid and fennel will make fennel salicylate, which is that major side product, results in the loss of water, which probably ended up in this. So that explains its sort of semi-liquid state. You can see that the byproducts that were left in the flask are uh, quite viscous and uh, it's sort of a, you know, it's almost a clear, hard liquid and that's probably fennel salicylate. It's still a little warm, but uh, I should probably see if I can get that out and use it for something. I don't know. Alright, so I'm all set up for distillation. Same exact setup. I just rinsed this uh, still head out with acetone, dried it all off and everything, and then replaced the receiver that was over here uh, with the boiling flask that was in there. And you can see it's 
the fennel is happily sitting in there with some salicylic acid and some other products and I'm just going to begin to heat that. Now what's going to happen is that uh, some lower boiling products will come off first. We'll measure those uh, boiling temperatures with the thermometer that's inside of course using the thermocouple probe and we'll collect that as a forerun. And then when that uh, thermocouple reaches 180 degrees Celsius, or 181 that is, uh, which is the boiling point of fennel, I will then uh, swap that with a separate clean receiver and we'll collect the fennel fraction. And then uh, if it starts to climb from there, we'll go ahead and quit the distillation so we can get a nice clean cut of fennel from the, uh, the products that are in there. So anyway, I'll just uh, turn on the heat and I'll spend a little time with this heat gun preheating the condenser and uh, yeah, pretty much the same as before. All right, you can see the liquid is just now beginning to boil. Um, fennel and water do form an azeotrope, and that is at uh, 99 and a half degrees Celsius, and the azeotrope is of 91% fennel. It's at 90.8 or right close to 91. So anyway, I'm going to uh, probably start collecting if the steelhead immediately reaches that temperature because I don't want to lose any of my fennel, and in general, water in the fennel isn't going to do too much uh, damage in further reactions that I'll be using this with. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So you can see it's just now starting to boil. We're getting just a little bit of reflux in the head now. And uh, if this goes straight to 99, that's a good sign. I'll go ahead and swap the uh, flask out. So you can see we're rapidly climbing. 47, 48, 50. And the vapors are right there at the thermometer. 65, 69, 73. 75, yeah, I think this is probably going to just be the water fennel azeotrope. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, swap this as soon as this is verified to hit uh, about 100 C. And for an initial four run, I've noticed that uh, the distillate has gone completely clear. So I'm actually going to swap this out with another flask to see if uh, maybe the azeotrope was only a small amount and that actually uh, the fennel that I have can be rather pure. So I'm going to try this. All right, after much uh, finagling around of the flasks, I have managed to pour all the four runs into one container here, and you can see that there's a significant amount of some milky substance in there that I'm not really sure what is. I thought initially it was crystallized fennel in the fennel water azeotrope, but fennel and water are very soluble in one another, so I was having my doubts, so I kept an extra couple of flasks around just in case, and it's a good thing I did because you can now see that I've got pure fennel coming over at uh, the exact temperature it should, or well within the... Uh, the accuracy of the thermocouple that is, um, and it's nice and clear, and we're collecting a bunch of great product right now. And uh, you can see, since it's coming over at 180 and I have water in the condenser, that the water in the condenser is actually boiling and sending a jet of steam uh, straight out, which is kind of interesting, but I can continue to, continue to add more water to that if necessary uh, using the condenser hose, which is uh, a little bit difficult to get stuff into, but not impossible. So. I'll be doing that to keep that under control periodically throughout this distillation, but it should only be a few more minutes before I uh, finish isolating the fennel from that and we get into the salicylic acid fraction, which uh, will need to stop the distillation at that point. So, anyway, uh, more in a few minutes. It's not every day you see condenser water boiling and there's not something horrifically wrong. It's kind of interesting. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes, and the stillhead temperature is just now approaching 190 C. Um, the uh, salicylic acid that's left in there is causing the boiling point of that bath to become quite high, and so even though the vapor leaving is still mostly fennel, it's coming off at a much higher temperature than the fennel's 181 C boiling point. However, the uh, reflux rate has dropped quite a bit, um, and also the, uh, the collection rate has also dropped, which means that we are getting near to the end of the usable amount of fennel we can actually extract from this without getting a significant amount of salicylic acid impurity. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the heat off, and we'll let this uh, slowly cool off, and then we can examine our fennel product. All right, so the distillation has stopped, but it hasn't fully cooled yet, and uh, that's important because, of course, fennel solidifies at room temperature, so I want to pour it while it's still hot. And because the condenser water is hot, this stuff comes off at about the boiling point of water. So uh, this is the final product. You can see it's just a clear liquid, and it stinks uh, very reminiscent to a lot of cold products like uh, throat sprays and things like that. Anyway, I've got a pre-warmed glass funnel, and I'm going to pour it into this cold container here before it solidifies in the flask, and then I have to, uh, you know, torch it out. And uh, we'll do this for storage, and pretty soon it should solidify. Although it does have a tendency to supercool, so may or may not. Uh-oh. 
Yep, well, that's what I'm talking about. You can see uh, we've solidified it in the container here and uh, also, unfortunately, in the funnel. Let's see if I can knock some of that down. Yep, I'm gonna have to get creative with a heat gun, it looks like. And you can see it's melting right out. No problems. A little bit hot to hold on to. And I'm gonna preheat this funnel a little bit too. Just to make sure we can get it in there without it solidifying on us. And let's see if this will work. Like a charm. And here's the final yield. It's 53 grams of quite pure fennel. Uh, this doesn't represent a very good yield from salicylic acid, and that's mostly because I had some temperature regulation problems in the beginning of the reaction. Uh, in fact, my heating mantle failed uh, a little earlier on in that video, which I didn't uh, show, but um, it did cause some scrambling around, and uh, it left a lot of phenyl in contact with salicylic acid for an extended period of time. And I think that's what happened. Uh, this residue, as you can see here, is uh, a large amount of the weight of the salicylic acid. I think it's a lot of unreacted salicylic acid in addition to... Um, uh, quite a bit of uh, phenyl salicylate. So I may process this in a future video, but I don't quite know. Anyway, I happen to have a 500 gram jar of fennel already. This I just wanted to make a video about as a proof of concept so that you could do it yourself if you wanted a little bit of fennel so you can copy my videos in the future that I'm going to make with fennel, of course. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to donate to my Patreon account, it helps me make these videos uh, possible, which is really cool. So. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to donate a dollar or something like that. Every little bit counts. Thank you very much to all those who have uh, donated so far, uh, in, especially in the month of January. You guys paid for these videos, and really, I can't thank you enough. Anyway, I uh, really like making this video. I uh, hope you liked it as well. If you liked it, press the like button. If you want to see more, press the subscribe button. And as always, thanks very much for watching.